Hi guys! So it's like I actually wanted to upload for Valentine's Day last week, but you know when everything just goes wrong and then you try again and everything goes wrong again and it's just so disheartening? That has just been everything I've attempted recently, so I decided to take a few days out, just take a step back, and then I've come back to everything I've been working on and everything is back to normal, I feel good and creative again. So here is the Queen of Broken Hearts. I decided she'd be a little crazy, maybe she's had her heart broken one too many times, so now she cuts out the hearts of her loved ones before they can break her heart and she eats it so it's always going to be a part of her and they can never leave. <laughs> so starting with the base I've already applied a primer and now I'm going to apply a flat base of foundation. I'm pale so I'm just going to use my own shade um, but I will be going slightly lighter with uh, powder so bear that in mind if you want to use a lighter shade now you can feel free to do that. It doesn't really matter what your skin tone is, as long as you go a lighter shade than your neck, you're going to get the same kind of look. Next, I'm taking a very pale, basically white uh, face powder, and I'm going to pack this onto my skin. And I mean packing it on there. I wanted it to look like I've literally just thrown flour on my face. You want to use this to help define wrinkles as well. So if you scrunch up your face like around your eyes and your mouth and things uh, and then pack the powder on, it's going to leave like lines where the skin was scrunched. If you don't have a powder like this, like such a white powder, but you still want a white base, you can use white face paint um, and you can still do the same kind of thing with the scrunching of the face for the wrinkles, but it's going to give a much bolder look. Next, I'm applying some intense blush on the apples of my cheeks and I'm pulling it backwards towards the hairline over the cheekbones. I wanted the makeup to somewhat resemble 18th century makeup. Not the whole thing, but just the base with the pale skin and the bright blush and the um, beauty mark later on. But instead of looking beautiful, I wanted it to look worn and messy. Like she's been living in it for a while, you know, like she's kind of forgotten about it. I decided that blush wasn't bright enough, so I also applied a hot pink over top. I still wanted to define the brows, um, because I still wanted the character to like still look like me, and I like to define my brows personally. So here I'm going in with my regular brow products. Um, I'm making the brows look less groomed and slightly thicker than I would normally wear them. Um, and instead of setting them smoothly, I'm just going to set them all over the place. So moving on to the eyes, I'm starting by hollowing out the sockets and I'm also adding some shadows underneath the eye as well. Uh, this is why I didn't add concealer or anything. And to do this, I'm just using my regular contour shade. So I'm going to do a nice pretty look on the lid first and then we've got to destroy it. So you'll see I have eyeshadow on my lids here, but ignore that. I, I tried something and it didn't work out, um, so you don't need it. Instead, you want to apply a silver liner. I'm applying it heaviest on the inner third of the lid um, and applying less and less the further out I get. But I still want to apply a bit so the colour kind of flows. Um, and I'm just blending this out with my finger. This look, by the way, just how it is now, not the whole thing, I mean just like the brown and the silver, is absolutely stunning. I really want to do some kind of look with this silver on the lid now, with that brown underneath because it almost looks kind of like duochrome, it's very pretty. Next I'm applying black winged liner because I like how winged liner looks, <laughs> but also because it's going to look really good when we distress it later on. Because winged liner is so bold and sharp to begin with, um, you know like in your mind you kind of know that that's how it's supposed to look. The contrast of when it's really destroyed and distressed is really nice for a look like this. So while I have that liner out, I drew a little heart on my cheek, again reminiscent of the 18th century makeup style, you know, with like the beauty marks. And when we do the tears later on, we get to break the heart. So it'll be like the name of the character. <laughs> Such a loser. So <laughs> underneath the eye, I'm going to add some more of that silver liner. And then I'm going to run a white liner just across the waterline, just because. <laughs> I also smudged some black liner underneath the eye, but this bit really isn't that important. I ended up going crazy with some mascara under there in a second, so it just gets covered anyway. 
So I wanted the mascara to look really worn and transferred and like it had been applied just very messily and carefree. So just using the end of the wand, um, I'm just going to smush it on there. And if you go through the motions of actually applying your mascara but not stopping where you would usually stop to avoid the transferring, if you just kind of go through with it, then it's going to look really organically applied as well, like you've actually just messed it up. Next I'm applying some false lashes and I have absolutely no idea what these are. Um, I just found them in my drawer. You know when you have those lashes that are just on their last leg and you just have no use for them? This is a perfect reason. This is why I keep all of my crappy lashes because you never know when you're gonna need to turn yourself into a deranged psychopathic killer character, you know? So I just have a little, <laughs> a little like matchbox full of old lashes. It just looks like a box full of spiders. It's really nasty. <laughs> For the lips, I decided to go with a red lipstick and I decided to keep the lips quite small and pouty looking so I didn't take them all the way to the sides. It's kind of like a nod to the Red Queen from Alice in Wonderland, you know because she has the love heart lips. Um, obviously I've pulled inspiration from that character with her being a Queen of Hearts as well so I, I didn't want to go too over the top but I did want to give just a little nod to that character so I kind of just... I, I met the characters halfway with the lips. So now you want to go ahead and distress the makeup, which is definitely my favourite bit. Always is. So I'm using Illamasqua's, uh, it's a new product, I think it's called the Corrupter. It's kind of got like a Vaseline type texture to it. It's for distressing makeup, it's exactly for this kind of use. So I'm going to apply this all over the lid and that's going to add high gloss and it's definitely going to screw up the makeup, which is exactly what you want. So I applied it and then I just kind of looked around so that my lid would move and it would disrupt the product and then the product underneath is just going to end up sitting in the creases and looking fabulous. It's also perfect for simulating tear streaks um, and tears because of the gloss, like the shine to it. Um, it would also be great for sweat as well if that was something you needed for a character. So next you want to break that heart on the cheek, which I'm going to do with just some makeup remover on a small brush. If you use a firm brush with short bristles, then you're going to have much better control over the product removal and kind of the shape you create. Whereas if you use kind of like a flimsy brush, then you're going to create a real mess instead of an organized mess. So try to use a small brush if you can. I also wanted to bring some of that black down as well, like it had been pulled down by the tears, but this Ciate uh, eyeliner doesn't budge, so I had to add some liquid um, eyeliner on there as well to make that possible. But now that's it. So one of the reasons I did this character is because um, I was thinking about looks I could do for Hall like not Halloween, Valentine's Day. So obviously I was thinking about hearts, and then I had this idea of like, a character holding a heart with like a bloody hand like in the blood dripping down the arm. So I really just wanted to have a go at making a heart prop. So I decided to film it in case it went well and I could share it with you guys. So I was going to include it in this video but I think I'm going to upload it by itself for those of you who are interested in seeing a more in-depth video about it. So I'll leave a link below when I've edited that together. But until then I hope you enjoyed this look and thank you guys for watching. Happy uh, late Valentine's Day, I guess. <laughs>